Hi everyone and welcome to the Types of Access Control PowerPoint and Lecture. We're going to cover physical access control technology and personnel. Physical security is, you know, old style and it's obvious pretty much uh, most places, you know, you got keys that go in, doors, locks, those kind of things. You have turnstiles and turnstiles can get uh, pretty fancy. They can look like these massive cages or they're the simple ones that uh, you see here on the far left. Now, another form of old school style physical security is uh, the gates and entrances and signs you see here. Uh, you also see these cones and things like this. There are these pullout stanchions um, that are also in place, and we'll talk about those a little bit more here in a few minutes. One of the things that I love to show in this particular part of the lecture is uh, a soccer stadium. I'm a soccer fan, and I noticed this in these games. Now, what you're looking at is fans being um, blocked off by an old school style of security, physical security, which is fencing. You see on the, on the right here uh, some fencing that is set up, and you also see here some people actually trying to climb the fences. So that's one of the um, ways we have um, some level of security. Now, let me show you something, an example of what happens. This was at a, um, a pretty high level competition, and it was Mexico versus Trinidad in 2015. This uh, player is taking a corner kick, and all of this stuff was thrown at him. So what we've done and this was just a few few days ago in the U.S. men's national team against El Salvador. They added fencing, you can see here, to help prevent uh, that type of thing happening or from uh, patrons, you know, guests to go over the, uh, the fence into the field. And you can see here, somebody from the audience actually brought a ladder to help them get over these fences and go through these uh, these barriers. So they really do want to. Now here's another example. This was in that very game. You see here where they have fences up and the riot police had to show their, they had guards throw, uh, up there and shields to block. This is uh, Claudio Reyna. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Reyna. And he's a member of the U.S. men's national team. He got hit in the head, you see here on the left, um, during a game as well. Um, and he had to be taken off. I think he lost a couple of games because of that. But he was hit in the head with a bottle. So they do all kinds of things to pr uh, protect the players. That's one of the reasons you have this kind of access and controlled access going into certain areas. Again, that's physical access. Now, technology. It typically applied to access points in its most basic form of lock and key. So we're talking about fobs, ID key cards, phone apps, codes, and these, which are at their core, they record when a room and space is room or space is accessed. Okay, so let me say that again. At their core, at their fundamental level, they record when a room or a space is accessed. They can, if the next layer is deployed especially with fobs and key cards, record the who, as well as where and when that room was accessed. You still don't know if someone else is using somebody else's key or the fob, but nonetheless, you can see who it was assigned to. We have the highest level of technology for access control being the biometrics. This is a very unique identifier to each individual and it cannot be replicated. You have retinal scans and fingerprints, which are unique to that individual. Here we're showing two examples of those. I'm a huge fan of NCIS, and if you ever see them trying to get into an elevator on NCIS, often you'll see them use a retinal scan to do that. Um, and they've got some pretty entertaining scenes on that. But we use it in the event business quite a bit. You have, um, a, okay, let's talk about a time, for, uh, excuse me, let's talk about uh, comparison here. Which one's more of a deterrent, personnel or technology? What I have learned from my experience, when I'm putting on concerts, I want as many uniformed or identified security as possible. The technology is something of a backup, but you always have the person there. It is, 
it is more of a deterrent and think of your own situation when you go into a place um, if you see security guards around there you are going to be a little bit more on your best behavior there are all sorts of badges and credentials some sometimes your ticket is a form of identifier if you've been to a concert and were asked how asked to show your ticket before going into a section, this is a form of credentials. Others are wristbands that you can't take off. Or I, I know when I was young, or you guys may have done it, you tried to take off those wristbands. You paid a cover charge, you get your wristband, uh, but you try to take those off and hand it some to somebody else so they can get in. You also have QR codes, lanyard badges, hand stamps, and more. Now, I want to say I'm not pushing that taking your badges off and exchanging them is a is a good thing to do. It's not, but these from these are methods we deploy when we are talking about access to venues and controlled spaces. Now, something I want to talk about here. We need to change the colors and themes for these badges right here. Why do you want to do that? What do you think uh, is the reason behind that and I'm going to show you a couple of examples here these are access passes that are policed okay so in other words if you have a certain kind of badge you can get into a certain type a certain area if you have an all access access pass you can go anywhere you want or you have limited access passes denoted by a design a label or so, some unique method of segmenting access here on the left is Pearl, Pearl Jam badges, and on the right is Rolling Stone access badges. You can see different colors and designs used depending on the access level, the city, the tour date, etc. Now, a good test when designing these, and it's kind of it's it's pretty important, and it falls under the marketing world usually. They need to be easily identified by security in the dark or low light situations. Sometimes that means the colors are bold. And the size of these passes are large, so they can be seen by the human eye and electronic eyes or cameras. For festivals, I always made them large with separate colors, not shades or anything like that. And, they, and I had them on lanyards, so they look like almost a license plate hanging around the guest's neck. I didn't want these fitting in a pocket or a purse easily you'd want to give your security folks what we call cheat sheets showing the colors and access levels. For example, blues are all access, yellows would be meet and greet on Friday, green would be meet and greet on a Saturday, and so on. So you can see where this type of detail and this access control mechanism is pretty important and can get pretty involved depending on your event. RFID or radio frequency identification devices are often used in the casino business. I would use this technology to allow certain guests into high limit gaming rooms. I'd also use these on employees to make sure they had access to areas they could service and do their job. Near NFCs or near field comms are basically your smartphone. You can pop up an app or scan a QR code and you're in. Bluetooth is also providing the same level of access control for NFC. Biometrics are increasingly being used. These are the vocab, so uh, make sure you, you understand what biometric access control is. It's a human's unique physical characteristics. This is biometrics. It's human's unique physical characteristics to grant access to that area. This can be handprint or palm print or fingerprint, retinal scan, voice recognition. My Alexa and Siri have this, facial recognition and more. Um, I don't know, are y'all having the same issue if somebody on a, a TV screen says, hey Siri, can you do this? And as soon as I said that, my Siri turned on. But um, it happens. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? There you go. That's a, a good one. No, Siri. Thank you. Thanks. Glad to help. Gotta love when that happens. Tailgating or piggybacking is not what you do at a Razorback game, at least not in this context. But it is following an authorized person through an access point. This would be a plus one, for example. 
It is a fan with a meet and greet pass wants to take their best friend with them. That may or may not be allowed, but regardless, it's called tailgating or piggybacking on someone else's access. And you have to determine if you're going to allow that at, when you're planning this, planning your event. More vocabulary. What's the difference between authenticate, authentication and authorization? Authentication is the security practice of confirming that someone is who they claim to be, while authorization is the process of determining which level of access each user is granted. Let me say that one more time for you guys. Authentication is the security practice of confirming that someone is who they claim to be. Authorization is the process of determining which level of access each user is granted. Hopefully you got that. All sorts of technology in this space in the forms of magnetic stripes, QR codes, proximity cards, barcodes, and more they are developing and deploying every single day. At typical events, you'll see layers of security. Sometimes it starts in the parking lot with attendants, making sure you're parked correctly and get to the venues safely. Then security scanning before you enter the venue. Lines dedicated to access levels, retract, let me try that again. Retractable belt barriers, angry bull, that's these things right here, that's what they're called, is angry bull. The steel interlocking barricades are there. Badges and others. If you go to a university athletic event or a local concert, you'll notice these and more. So take a look around next time you go. Let me know if you've seen any, any of these and where you've seen them. I'd be curious to, see, to hear from you guys. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, go through it a few times before you take the quiz on this. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. And you'll eventually train yourself to when you walk into a venue to notice all of the access controls that are available. So hope this makes sense, guys. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.